Welcome back to part two of my five day trip to Florida. If you haven't seen part one yet, I'll link it on screen now and in the description below. There's still so much more to come from this trip and I can't wait to share it with all of you. So please stick around till the end. So quick recap, we're on midday of the third day and we're about to head out for our afternoon boat dives. On our last dive, I got up close with the sharks and Paul came face to face with his Goliath grouper. So, I think we're good to go. Oh, Paul, how was your experience with the Goliath? Mm. Mm. Is that your trip of success now? What's well, already anyway? Yep. I mean, if you had to pick one thing that you're coming down here to see, what would it be? I came specifically to see the Goliath. <laughs> The Christ of the Abyss statue is one of the most visited dive spots in Key Largo. It's popular with non-scuba tourists too. In fact, it's one of the first things to pop up in an image search of Key Largo, so naturally there's a lot more garbage and debris. James, what else did you find down there other than the snorkel and the credit card? That was it. That was it, snorkel and credit card. My highlight of that entire dive was getting to do some cleanup with the man himself, James. Exception to the rule. Take only photos, leave only bubbles. Unless there's garbage around, take that with you too. Maybe. That's the end of day two. <laughs> Fantastic bunch of firsts off the list again, but kind of upset. We've only got two more dives left to go, and we don't know what they're gonna be. They're gonna be tomorrow morning, the last two. We're gonna head back into shore now. We didn't have any rain, we didn't have any lightning, didn't have any thunderstorms or anything, so I don't know what they were talking about. It does look a bit more murky in by land by now though, but hopefully that's not gonna affect tomorrow's dives either, ideally. If it can just hold out until the end of tomorrow, and then it can do whatever it wants to do. If it wants to be thunder, if it wants to be lightning, if it wants to be storms and stuff, that'd be the best time for it to happen. A new place, a new home, for a while, let me feel alive. Okay, so now we're at a place called Sharky's, which is another one of John's recommendations. And he hasn't been wrong so far, so I'm guessing that means he's going to be right about this one too. Hey, we're both wearing Dive World t-shirts. Oh, there you go. There you go. You ever in Toronto, go to Dive World. Looks like we're about to get some live music as well. Lovely. Mijitos always remind me of Mexico. Yeah. Classic. This concludes day three of the trip, day two of the diving. <laughs> Another bunch of firsts crossed off my bucket list of things to see and things to do. Every single time we're doing a dive, and I feel like that's maybe it for the dive, maybe there's nothing else interesting to see, something else crops up. Like some of those reef dives towards the end, they were a little bit less eventful, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a stingray appears, or a lobster appears, or scorpion fish suddenly appears out of nowhere. This particular moment in time, we've got no plans whatsoever for tomorrow afternoon, so... There are a bunch of ideas floating around. We'll see. Hasta mañana. See you tomorrow. Good morning for day four of the trip. Day three of diving. Today is the final day, which kind of sucks, but all good things had to come to an end sooner or later anyway. <laughs> Thank you. Come on, yeah.
This thing has been invaluable. It's true. <laughs> and similarly, this thing here has been invaluable as well. <laughs> As if it was destined on our second last dive of the trip, Paul got to see an adult Goliath grouper. This thing was so big, it actually eclipses Hugh, our guide, right here. And then starts swimming straight towards Paul. This thing was so close, if it had a saddle on it, Paul could have rode on it. Just when I thought it couldn't get better, on the final dive of the trip, I finally got my opportunity to dive with turtles. On our final pass of the wreck, through a tiny little gap in the bow of the ship, we saw another turtle having a nap. Don't be concerned about the piece of metal lying on top of it. It turns out they actually like to wedge themselves under things so that when they're sleeping they don't drift away. Isn't that so adorable? <laughs> that is unfortunately the last dive of this entire trip. Which couldn't have ended on a better note. Fantastic. The only regret is that it's finishing this early. So, we're gonna have to find something for us to do for the rest of the afternoon. Hmm. So, for the final afternoon here in Florida, we decided to do something that's highly recommended and relatively iconic of the Florida Everglades. I'm gonna go on an airboat ride. Kind of cool, kind of iconic, kind of something that people say you got to do when you come to Florida. It's sort of like doing the the nearest thing that I can compare it to is a jet boat ride in Queenstown. Oh, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel so alive. As I reach out, reach out, reach out, reach out. Well, that's the end of our trip here in sunny Florida. The weather managed to hold out on us. We didn't have any major rain to hinder us or any lightning storms or anything. Um, tomorrow is literally just getting up and going back to the airport and heading back off to Toronto. So if you like this video and you want to see more like it, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'd like to give a huge thanks to Horizon Divers for the best dives ever. I'd like to thank James for appearing in this video and for being just as cool in real life as he is in his videos. And I'd especially like to thank Paul for being an amazing dive buddy without which this trip would have never happened. Anything from Paul, the last thing you want to say? I'm staying. Staying. It was that good. Adios. See you next time.